Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Today our topic about things you do not know about Prophet Muhammad. Now, there is a lot of things you do not know about Prophet Muhammad. Obviously, I mean a lot, a lot of things. And all of them they are amazing. The more you read about Prophet Muhammad, the more you will go crazy. The Prophet was the most wise man. The Prophet was the most decent man. The Prophet was the most wonderful man. The Prophet was the most beautiful husband. The Prophet was the best of mankind. The Prophet was the best Prophet. The Prophet was the final Prophet. The Prophet said, trust Allah, but tie your camel. I don't know really what to say. Each time the Muslims, they make articles about their Prophet, I feel clearly that Muslims, they are trying to say to us, worship Muhammad and tie Allah. Why they are praising too much Muhammad? If Muhammad is one of 124,000 prophets Allah he sent, why Allah himself he praised Muhammad and he forget about the rest of the prophet? Why Muhammad is the favorite to Allah? Why Allah did not send only one prophet, his name is Muhammad and that's it? Why Allah did not keep Muhammad alive so we can keep listening and learning from his wisdom? He kept the Isa. And who need the Isa now? I mean, Isa is in heaven supposedly. And Allah is not sending him now. Why Muhammad he came 600 years after Isa, which is supposedly Jesus? Why between the 600 years and Muhammad, Allah he was a mute? Strike, don't want to talk. All those stories are funny and silly and stupid. Ten things you should know about the Prophet Muhammad. Some articles they have 50 things you need to know. Some depend on the writer how long he wanna make it, how shorter he wanna make it. But all of them they lead us to one thing: that Muslims they tie Allah and they trust Muhammad. And how we can prove that? If we show the Muslims something written in the Quran and something said by Muhammad, which one they follow? They follow Muhammad. Why? Because Muslim they tie Allah and they trust Muhammad in other way Allah is the same as the camel for Muhammad and today we can prove it very easy but as long as we are talking about a hadith mentioned by Muhammad supposedly that he said trust Allah and tie your camel I mean I can accept this that's okay well you trust God but you don't let things go don't be a fool right okay so when Muhammad he Allah he sent him what is equal to a camel, but he can fly and go to the seven heaven. His name is Al Buraq. Allah sent him from the seven heaven. Allah, He sent this animal from the seven heaven. So Muhammad, what did tie him for what purpose? Muhammad, he did tie this animal. How you tie him? Allah sent him from the seven heaven. He did not even lose his way. This animal, Al Buraq, was sent from the journey where it's coming from the galaxies, beyond the galaxies, coming to the house of Muhammad. And then this al Buraq, when he arrived to Muhammad, Muhammad, he tied him up. Is that because you don't trust Allah? Well, Allah is the one who sent it to you. This is not a normal camel you found him in the desert or normal donkey or a mule or a horse. This is an animal sent by Allah. You tie him for what person? For purpose? Here you notice that Muhammad he did not know even how to fabricate a lie. He is so silly and so stupid to the point even his lie is is, is not even good for kids. You know, we have God. He sent me an animal from God knows where, millions of billions of of of, of miles away, and then what? I tie that animal in the wall. And that as long as this animal is so powerful to the point he can go out of the zone of the earth. Remember, you see, imagine you tie a spaceship to a nail in the wall. Uh, are you guys getting my point? Imagine we have a spaceship and we decided to tie the spaceship to the wall to, uh, by a nail. 
I mean, who is the stupid who can believe that a little nail in the wall can stop the spaceship from flying? So how Muhammad, he was able to control this powerful animal because you see, remember, in order to go out of the zone of the earth, you have to have, even if it's like a normal creature as an animal, like maybe have a blood, etc. We don't I know this is what Muhammad described him, but that animal have to have an extreme power to go out of the zone of the earth. Otherwise, he cannot get out. It's not only a power of a normal missile, it has missiles, it has to be something really powerful. So then we tie him with a nail in the wall. And that nail supposedly will stop this amazing creature who can fly the galaxies, who can leave the earth. He can get inside the earth, inside the, the, the zone of the earth, which the, the, the atmosphere without burning. How powerful this animal is. Yet Muhammad is tying his animal with a nail in the wall. Some stories, they say that Jibreel, he put his finger in the wall, he made a hole in it, and he tied him with it. Imagine we tie this with the wall. Who is the fool will believe in such a story? So yes, Muhammad, he said, trust Allah and tie your camel. But can we trust Muhammad and his stories in order to trust Allah? I don't think so. The articles the Muslims always they make for us, it's not even good for somebody is the first grade school. Somebody is seven, year, seven years old, eight years old, even 10 years old. Have you seen video posted by Sani who mean, this guy is just like, you know, this guy, he need to make 1,000 video about my video in order to fix what happened to him. This is what happened to Muslims. They, 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 they challenge me once, then we spank them, and then they have to make a 1,000 video to respond to my video. Let him try. We get him busted already. Too late. So look at this stupidity. Trust Allah, but tie your camel. I'm going to tie it all uh, today. I'm going to tie Allah and release Muhammad. This is the Muhammad they try to present for us in their articles. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Hmm? And I didn't, I didn't see that peace be upon him anywhere. But I mean, I mean, Muslims, they, you know, 20 interesting facts about Prophet Muhammad. Prophet, he's a camel boy. Does that make him special because a camel boy? I mean, even this, this one is a fact. Okay, his wife proposed him for marriage. Okay, I don't want to talk about this. You want me to talk about this? Even the marriage of Muhammad was a fraud. Even the marriage of Muhammad was a fraud. Let us get some reference so people will not say we are making things up. Khadija, she proposed to marry him, according to the Muslims. What people do not know. That Khadija was a lot older than Muhammad. And Muhammad was from a bad family with bad reputation. So in order for Khadija, the old woman who is trying to get a younger man, a lot younger, she could not convince her family to accept this man who she want to marry and why she want to marry he is young working for her he was subdued she ordered him he do everything perfect toy 
And here we need to ask ourselves a question. When Khadija she proposed to Muhammad, what happened next? Let us see the story. And I want you to be the judge. How a person like this can be considered a prophet of God. And I will not show the story from a Christian resource. I will show it to you from Islamic resource as usual. This is the book of Musnad Ahmad. Let us show it in the screen. I was just picking up the reference. The book of Musnad Ahmad, Al Imam Ahmad. And by the way, uh, Imam Ahmad, when the Muslim want, he is a strong. His hadith is a strong. When they want, he is nothing. He is stupid. When they want, it's up to the mood, you know. Up to what you are showing us. If you are showing us a story like this, we will reject it. Hadith number 242846. Let us show the whole screen so everybody can read in case there is somebody he speaks Arabic. حدثنا أبو كامل حدثنا حماد بن سلمة عن عمار عن أبي عم بن أبي عمار عن ابن عباس etc. that the Prophet رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ذكر خديجة وكان أبوها يرغب أن يزوجه أبوها read carefully guys ابن عباس reported from 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 that the Prophet of Allah, he mentioned Khadija. And her father, he want, he will not accept him. So she made food, drink, alcohol and she invited her father and this is obviously that's mean uh, that Khadija she is a growing very old woman live by herself she did not need her daddy to live with him but still this is a tradition that the family should accept so she made food drink and she invited her father and people from Quraysh they ate fata'imu wa sharibu they ate and they drank until they got so drunk. فقالت خديجة لأبيها إن محمد بن عبد الله يخطبني فزوجني إلى إياه فزوجها إياه. محمد he's asking for my hand. The guy is drunk now. I have no idea what he's saying. محمد he want to marry me. Let, please let me marry him. So she took off his clothes, and this is a tradition, like if there is a wedding, you know, they dress the, the best of their clothes. So she changes the clothes, and she made him wear the most expensive clothes, which always wear only for, for special occasions. As all fathers do, like when there is a wedding. And when he woke up from his alcohol uh, 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 being drunk, he look around and he says, why am I wearing this? He found himself dressing very well. And he had the expensive clothes on him. So he said, what is this? What is that? And she said, Khadija, yesterday you married me to Muhammad. He said, I will marry you to this orphan. And obviously here because he's a, he's a poor man. The son of Abi Talib, bad family. I swear by my life, I will never do that. Khadija, she said, aren't you ashamed? Do you want people to laugh at you? Do you want, to, do you want us to tell the people that you were drunk yesterday? So she's black in mailing him. You know, she did the blackmail to her father. And this is one of many stories about Khadija and Muhammad. Different story says that the same. They prepared, drank, and etc., etc. But the guy did not even agree for anything. 
he woke up in the morning she told him she lied to him she said well you married me yesterday to Muhammad the marriage of Muhammad is nothing but a fraud based on alcohol what make Khadija and Muhammad became wife and husband as you see alcohol let us use Google translation so uh, Muslim will not say or oh, this is not the current you know Google translation whatever it is we will accept it take your time and read it and see for yourself she drunk him she made him a drunk so he is not aware of what he's saying what he's talking and what's happening around the guy he woke up in the morning he found himself suddenly became the father of law of Muhammad and Muhammad in the bed of Khadija already this is how Muhammad started his prophethood life by a fraud and by alcohol can Muslims say I'm lying Any Muslim? So the first thing we do not know about Muhammad that he is willing to marry, marry a woman she is a lot older than him just because she is rich. She has many husbands before him just because she is rich. Now, by the way, I'm not against any man to marry any woman of his choice as long as she is a woman. Who cares? I mean, this is something personal. But here, he is not marrying her for the money. I mean, for the for for who she, he is marrying her for the money. How we can prove that? You see, if we go and check what Muhammad said, teaching wisdom to Muslims, what is the best to marry? What is what is the favorite style of marriage for Muhammad? Muhammad he liked childrens. He like children in the bed. He don't like women who they are old. He don't like women who they are widow. Who don't like women who they are not virgins. And the story is in the front of us, and this is Sahih. To the point, Muhammad not only he don't like it, he is advising his men to leave their women who they are widowed. And he was asking one of his men, his name is Jabir, why you don't go and find a virgin, a child? The man is married exactly to a woman like Khadija, but not like Khadija in the age. Let us say she is younger than him, but she is not rich. Muhammad, he did not like the idea. Muhammad, he don't advise him to do so. Muhammad asked him, did you marry? Huh? He said, yeah. He said, is she a virgin or a one previously married? I said, well, uh, a woman previously married. Mm -hmm. What a prophet of God should say to a man like this, who married a woman and he's happy with her. What the advice should be. Good for you, right? That's, I wish you a good luck. Muhammad, he don't concede with such a marriage this is a very bad idea to to get a woman she is previously married for Muhammad so look what he said he asked him a virgin or a one previously married here you will see how savage Muhammad is imagine I meet a friend and he said to me I, I got married so I said to him is her vagina was used or never used because this is what it means. What is your business? You are asking about virginity. Correct? This is what he's asking. He's asking about the, the, the statues of her private part. What is the business of a prophet of God to ask such a question? The man is married. He is doing nothing wrong. This is his wife. And this is none of the business of anyone. What, what kind of a question this question is? 
What's his business? I said, Messenger of Allah, with one who was previously married. Muhammad here is unhappy. Whereupon he said, Why? 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 Look, why you idiot? Why you don't marry a young girl, huh? Why? And now Muhammad giving the real reason behind this wisdom. So that you could sport with her. And she could sport with you. What the heck? So how Muhammad marry Khadija, the woman who is a lot older? She cannot sport with him. <coughs> he cannot sport with her. And she is a widow. And she is not a virgin. And she is not young. Which means none of those requirements which Muhammad prefer for marriage exist in Khadija. Do you see it? Do you see it, guys? <clears throat> yeah, play with her. You know, she play with it. You see, here you see that the man, he have a mental issue. I mean, he is asking the guy to go and get a child. And what is the fun? It's fun. The children are fun. You know, you play with them. So for Muhammad, having sex with a child is fun. It's not a child abuse. It's not a rape. It's not being perverted. He is giving you even the logic for it. Like, why you should do that? Because simply you can play with her. So why Muhammad he married Khadija? <clears throat> as long this is not, you know, when I advise my men to do this, that's mean this is what I like. I'm speaking from my desire, what I think is best. So Muhammad here, proven to us that what he think best to marry is a child. They are fun. Not a widow. Not a previously married. Not a divorce. Not, not, not have to be virgin and young and so young. So the purpose is to play with her. So why Muslim do not know and why don't why the Muslim don't tell us in their article they make that the prophet was number one, he was a perverted man. Number two, he's deceiving. Because by saying to the man to do this he is deceiving and he is destroying his family the man if he listen now he will not like this woman no more he will go home and says get lost i'm going to find a child she is six years old like the prophet so what the muslim they say to us about the prophet is far away from the ugliness of this guy they worship him so they praise him and they say things which is far away from the truth And the first thing he will notice about Muhammad that not only he is not wise, not only he is perverted, not only he is evil because this is evil. When you go between a man and his wife, his marriage, trying to destroy it, you are being evil. A man is happily married with his women, and this is why actually he is rushing to go back home. Why you are involved? And what's your business? For he is acting as the devil. This is the devil whispering to you, says, Why you stay with this woman? Go and get someone. She is young, she is a child. And then Muhammad, uh, 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 he got the answer from this guy who was showing him, showing Muhammad that you are being stupid now. The guy, he said to him, Well, you know what? My brother, he died fighting for you, and he left me nine children. And I cannot marry another child to be my wife. I need a woman to take care of them. Do you see the story? The man, he gave him the reason why. Why he did marry a woman, not a child. He said, my brother, he died as a murderer in Uhud, which means he was fighting for Muhammad. And left nine or seven daughters behind him. Therefore, did not approve the idea. I should bring a girl like them a girl like them Muhammad is asking him to marry a child an orphan like the orphans 
he have nine children in his house and he needs someone to take care of them so he marry a woman so Muhammad he said to him or the guy he said to him but I preferred to bring a woman obviously here here we see that this is a woman Muhammad is asking him to marry a child so we cannot marry just a girl we need a woman to take care of those girls who they are little children I cannot just uh, 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 get another girl in the top of the nine I have who they are children's I need a woman to take care of them what more proof we want from Islamic books or we need to prove that Muhammad is an evil person and then Muhammad he did not concede he keep he keep talking look But I preferred to bring a woman who should look after them and teach them good manner. Whereupon Allah Messenger said, May Allah bless you. Or he supplicate for good to be preferred, conferred to for me. The man he want a woman to teach him good manner. Muhammad, he want a child to play with the man. How that can be a prophet of God? Another lie about Islam and about Muhammad. Do you know that the Prophet was the final prophet? First of all, don't you shouldn't you have to prove to us that he was a prophet anyway to be the final prophet? He is the final prophet. Okay, Muhammad the prophesy. Muhammad he prophesy how the baby is made. How the how the baby is uh, how the baby is made. This is the prophet, the final pro the, the last prophet, and this is what Allah told him that the one who have orgasm first, the baby will resemble him, and he resembling not only mean the look, it mean female or female. Is that the prophet, the final prophet you are talking about? Hmm? This is the prophet. So he is the final prophet, but he says stupid things. Just to show you the intelligence of a prophet of Allah. I will I will look for something normal so you don't die laughing hmm? he heard Ibn Umar narrated that the Prophet said we are an illiterate ummah ummah mean nation this is how funny the Muslim translation we do not use comp uh, 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 computation and the the math is like this and this and this we don't we don't calculate we do not know how to calculate and for us the math is like I use fingers they use fingers to calculate the math is this is the math too this is etc hmm. so Allah he chose an idiot of the village between the other idiot so he can teach the mankind how to be idiots I mean, obviously, this is a perfect choice. And that explains why the Quran is full of stupid things. And by the way, can the Muslims say that this is, uh, this is wrong? I mean, this hadith is weak? No. Hmm? And that explains all the funny, stupid stories Muhammad, he come with, which obviously does not come from someone have a little education. He must be ready. Even the Pink Panther would not do that. Muhammad was so smart to the point he did this. Let us see.
there is a hadith I was with the messenger of Allah while Maimuna was with him. Those are the wives of the Prophet. Then Ibn Umm Kalthum, or Maktoum, sorry, came. Ibn Umm Maktoum is a blind man. He is a blind man. This has happened when they, we were ordered to observe the veil. The Prophet said, Observe the veil. Observe the veil from him. We asked, Oh, Messenger of Allah, but isn't he blind? <laughs> Unbelievable genius. I mean, this is really a genius. He's asking his wives to cover themselves because a blind man coming home. If I am the prophet, I would do the same. So the wives, they got the prophet busted. And they said to him, what? Isn't he? Isn't, is, is he not blind? He cannot neither see us nor recognize us. Look what the prophet said. Now the prophet, he got busted. He looked like a fool, but he will not concede with this. So he have to give an argument, you know, to, to show them, I'm not stupid. He said, are you both blind too? What? Do you not see him? What? Muslim women are not allowed to see anyone based on this. Muslim women are not allowed to say a human being he is a male, even if he is a blind based on this. But remember, the veil, the veil is to cover in yourself, so you can see. He did not say, uh, like, he said, just cover yourself, which means put extra cloth in yourself. Veil yourself. But that... Will not stop them from seeing him anyway. You just order them to veil themselves. Still, they can see him. And the man is not coming like he's naked. Can a Muslim woman see a man walking in the street? Any Muslim have an answer for this? Who is a Muslim would like to answer us? Can a man? Be seen by a woman in the street. Doctor Zain Khirallah Yurid al Hiwar. Okay, well, if he wants to call me, he can call me, no problem. Let me open my Skype. Here we go. We're Skype. We are getting in. And if he would like to call us, feel free. Here we go. Like we have a caller. Hello. 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 Yes. Uh, please. Um, I have a question. Um, I'm not that guy um, for you were waiting. Okay. Just uh, two minutes, okay? Uh, I'm not a Muslim anymore, but uh, I live in the Western countries, and uh, tomorrow I will meet with some Muslim people and Christian people and we will discuss topics and if they also I listening to your uh, program since seven months and if they say anything bad or uh, stupid or lie I will uh, will feel 
that what the Muslims say. So I want to ask you whether you can say, uh, uh, show me your references, uh, your home pages, which you use, so I uh, can show them. What do you mean, home pages? For example, sunnah.com you uh, you use for um, for hadith, hmm. and which uh, home pages do you use to show uh, tafsir or uh, translations? Uh, there's tons of uh, you know, but uh, tafsir not all of them have it in English. Like there is many. Uh, the admins they can yeah. post for you some some website we use usually. This is Muslim website, not ours. There is tafsir.com. Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah, so uh, can you show so just the uh, um, the home page which you use uh, the most times? For um, FCR, I see you use altafsir.com and uh, for yeah, altafsir.com, sometime uh, Ibn Kathir, you know, depend, uh, uh, depend which Kathir, one is uh, available in, in English because English still now we have a very little number of books which yeah, is already in, and, in English. So, and Ibn Kathir, can you explain me where I can find him? Uh, but Who Ibn Kathir, okay, I will give you the link. But Ibn Kathir in English okay. have nothing to do with Ibn Kathir in Arabic. They cut more than 80%, okay, okay. more than 80% of the real Ibn Kathir disappear. Okay. You know, so yeah, you cannot read, okay. you cannot depend uh, uh, on Ibn Kathir. Actually, I now try to open mm. uh, their, their link and it's not working, but I will post it in the link in the chat so you can have it anyway. Okay. They, maybe later they have a maintenance. This is the okay. usually I use, you know. And that's the home page which I can use then. This huh? is Ibn Kathir, but now it's not working. It says service is not available, error, etc. Yeah. Okay, and which home page do you use the most time? Also when I uh, I don't really I don't really care, you see, for me it's not about uh, I uh, for me sometime I, I need the English. So people will not say yeah. I'm making things up. So if we can't find something in yeah, English, sure. you know. Uh, but you all uh, always use uh, searchtruth.com for um, translation, right? No, and now I'm using actually uh, the one is called Quran Wow. Quran um, Wow. Can you give me the link too? Then uh, no it's problem. all what I want to ask you. No problem. Here we go. Anything else, okay, my friend? Hmm. No. All right, thank you very okay, much. Okay, then I would don't want to disturb anymore. Thank okay, thank you. Bye. All right. Do we have any Muslim want to say something? Or is the Muslim doctor he want to call me? He said. Where is the Muslim doctor he would like to call me? I don't see him. Anyway, actually, I thought this guy is him. Yeah, I don't know a Muslim doctor supposedly so you know when when the Muslim they speak about things About praising Muhammad how amazing he is obviously Muhammad is not even qualified to be uh, You know, I mean this this man is is uh, is weird and he is not smart and he's far away from being a teacher for anything How you order your wife to veil themselves, but the guy is blind? And so what if they see him? Who is a Muslim agree that according to Islam, we can order women not to see men? If this is the case, that's mean more women, they cannot walk in the street. Because there is men in the street. How in the world we can accept such a thing to be coming from God? If it were, so why God he gave her eyes just to see uh, inside her house should we jail our women inside the house actually this is what Muslims do in many countries any Muslim then the Muslim they come with other lie saying that Muhammad okay Muhammad is illiterate okay you showed us that Muhammad even cannot count Okay. Muhammad even he used his finger to count, you know, months. He don't even know how to count, maybe to three to four. All right. So how you explain to us how, how the, the Arab they were amazed with the Quran? The Arab were amazed in the Quran? Where? This is what the Arab said about the Quran.
the chapter of Al-Anbiya, verse number 21. Each time Muhammad, he come to them to speak about their Quran, his Quran, his ideas of God, the revelation which he received from Allah. What they say to him? Do you see it? They say, this is nothing but stupid things. This is nothing but invent, you know, invented stories. This is not even a good point. What about you give us something solid as a, as a miracle? This is nothing but not even, this is nothing but copying from old stories from the old ancient people. We heard this before. Why you don't give us a miracle? Let him bring us just one thing of those is given to before him. So why people before him they've been given a lot of things which is amazing, and this guy he have nothing. Here we go. They heard the Quran. They are laughing at the Quran. And then Muhammad he started threatening. Not a township believed in those which we destroyed before them. What does this have to do with that? They are asking you, okay, we will believe in you, but stop saying stupid things and give us a miracle. And then Muhammad, he want to prove that he's right. He said to them, go and ask the Christians and the Jews. What the Christian and the Jews have to do with you? And we send not our messenger before the others than the man whom we aspired ask the followers of the reminder if you know not okay how you say that the kuffar the, the follower of the reminder they are corrupt they are bad they are liars and now to prove yourself you say ask them that alone is stupid And then he continued with his madness and he kept saying stupid things that we give them not bodies, but they would not eat food nor weird, you know, because so they are not immoral, they will die. So, what is have they are asking you for a proof? He starts threatening God will do this to you and God will do this to you. Oh, what they are asking you, give us a proof. And then, because he makes, make, you know, he makes things up. Suddenly he speak about himself having a partner a woman to have sex with her Had we if we had wished to have to find a pastime in Arabic is the word lehu lehu is a female for sex for fun We could have found it with ourselves, not our presence Okay, what does have to do with the topic? We created not the heaven and the earth to play no you did is in the Quran says we created not a human being and genie except to worship me it's just for your fun so if you read those verses you will see that verse this verse have nothing to do with this verse have nothing to do with this verse have nothing to do with this verse And then he said, if they are where they are in God's beside Allah, then verily both of the heaven and the earth, both of them, they will be disordered. Well, isn't it that heaven is crude? If this is your logic, didn't you kick Adam from the heaven? According to you, the reason if there is if there is a, a problem <coughs> in heaven. <coughs> And earth, sorry, <coughs> sorry, sorry, guys. <coughs> I need some water. <laughs> if there's a problem in heaven and earth, then obviously there's gods beside Allah because it's out of order. Everyone do something different. Well, isn't it? This is exactly what happened in the heaven of Allah. To the point, he ordered the angels <coughs> to bow down to Adam when he said, "I'm going to create." A human being 
Then we see in different verses in the Quran, things are getting more stupid. Chapter 10, verse number 15. If you read the story here, you will see that how Muhammad is confused and how much he is collecting stories from people before him. And all of it is stupid. Alif Lam Ra. Muslims here translation saying those are verses of the wise scripture. What what does that mean? By the way, this is not not in the Quran. This is in the Quran. Alif lamb rock Muslim do not know what is that everyone he gets why because Muhammad was copying from a book written by Warqa bin Ufal, who was translating making a headline from the Aramaic people and then you will find that each time Muhammad he speak to people they say this is not but uh, you know sorcery this guy is a, is a, obviously he's a possessed This is what the Arab see or saw on the Quran. And then Muhammad, he proved to them that his God is a true God. He says, Allah, he created the earth in six days. And then he established himself upon the throne. He, everything created in six days, the heaven and the earth. But in different verse, Muhammad, he says different. Proving to us that Muhammad is not only non-consistent in his statement, he is stupid. Allah created the earth and the heaven in two days. Plus four, plus two. Two days for the earth. Do we have any Muslim want to say anything? How this is can be from God? How this is can be from God? Allah has created every animal of water. Every animal created of water. By the way, it doesn't say what they claim. Let us see other verse. Always you have to be careful with Muslims translation. Don't they see who disbelieve? Don't they see that the heaven and the earth was one piece and then we part in them? And then the Muslim now they say to you, this is the Big Bang. But this is not what the Quran is saying. By the way, the Big Bang is just a theory. It's not even a fact. However, the Muslim, they try to adopt anything around to make Islam as uh, scientific. So this is what they quote for you to say the Big Bang is in the Quran. But the Quran is saying that the earth and the heaven, they used to be one unit, which means there was a heaven and there was earth. And according to the Quran, Allah actually created the earth first and then he created the heaven. And then Allah, he separated them. And this is stupid because we are not separated. We are inside the space. We are little tiny dust in the space. And then Allah, he make a bigger poopoo. Muhammad, he claimed, supposing now he's being smart. And we made it from every living thing of water remember he's talking about what is in heaven and what is in earth but this is total contradiction to the Quran itself because Muhammad he says that the genie are made from fire and the angels are made from light so how they are made from light and that one made them from fire and then we made it from water every living thing a total stupidity 
we have placed on the earth mountains so the earth will not shake on you the earth is like a flying carpet and the earth sometimes shake so the Muslims the Quran claim that Allah he placed the mountains in the top and by the way this is a Muslim translation which is not right if you change the translation or translator sorry right away you will see the meaning switch upside down you cannot really trust any Islamic translation for anything and we have a place you see how uh, we just changed the translator look how it's there's a difference between the first one and the second one we have a place on earth firm mountains so there was earth and then Allah he placed mountains on the earth who in the world want to believe in such a garbage that's mean mountains was created and after it's created Allah he placed it on the earth hmm? and why so the earth will not shake on you the Muslim will say to you oh scientists they found that uh, uh, mountains they help to balance the earth this is not about balance the mountains actually happened by a nat natural movement of the of the ground the pressure of the ground is where the mountains created which mean it's not placed in the top of the ground it is from the ground from deep inside the ground this is why if you look at the mountains you will see layers of colors each color present a color under the ground so those all was down in the ground and then the ground is pushing this sand and rocks and etc and then they appear in the top revealing what was under the ground one day and this is why mountains like himalaya as an example they grow they don't shrink it's not like a mountain created and place it there this mountain is growing growing by size by height because the ground the earth push more push more release to release the pressure let us see just to look for a picture so we can show you a little bit about the mountains I'm sure more of you you know I mean all of you you know what I'm talking about but it doesn't hurt I'm just trying to find a clear picture so we can use as an example you see too many pictures and you uh, let us see which one I want to see like the one is uh, close up to the rocks so we can show what we are talking about maybe this one will do so if you look at those rocks here you will see that there is layers of the rocks it's not like it was not one piece it's not one piece where it has happened suddenly it is the ground pushing up this is why the top the top actually present the oldest part of it and the one is connected down to the ground is the newest part of it so the more you go down the more in you the mountain is the more you go up the more is going to be aging as existence so according to the Quran 
Muhammad, he tried to explain how the mountains are exist. Allah, he placed them in the top of the earth because the old legions believe that mountains are exist because God, he put, made the earth flat like a carpet. And if you don't put mountains in it, the, the carpet will fly. It's like going to the park. I'm putting rocks here and there in the end of the sheet. You want to sit in the floor with your family. So if we don't have those rocks, the wind will push this sheet and is going to fly. So what we notice about Muhammad, that he claimed to have knowledge, but he is an idiot. And the Muslims, they try to cover up fabricating tons of scientific miracles, which in fact, nothing but hocus and funny stuff. And the Arab, as you see, they make fun of Muhammad. They did not find Muhammad speaking science. They found Muhammad that he is an idiot. We made a video before we showed you how Allah supposedly created the earth and how Muhammad he don't even remember the order of the creation between chapter 79 and chapter number 41 one one chapter says Allah created the earth first and then he finished the heaven one it says he created the mountain first and then the grass and then after that the, the, the sky he make his stars and the other one says Allah he can finish the, the sky he finished the stars and then he created the mountains and then he created the grass and then the tree which mean in total different order so what do you not know about Muhammad that Muhammad is always under the influence of legions and lies he heard from people around him at that time because people they were naive like what as an example the story of Solomon Solomon he was going in the in the valley of the ants valley of the ants who in the world will believe in such a thing there's a valley it's called the valley of the ant okay and what what uh, where this story coming from? We search, we find that this is exist in the legion of the Jews. There's a chapter in the Quran actually, it's called chapter of the ants. Suleiman, he have an army from a chickens from Turkey from a sparrow from a human from genie he have a three kind of army human genie and birds do you need read to be genius to find out that Muhammad obviously he's a liar and he adopted the stories of the fairy tale and he make it as God saying to him Allah he taught uh, Suleiman the language of the birds okay why Allah taught Suleiman the language of the birds because he have an army of birds hello how the guy will give commands to the birds how you have like a one thousand one million chicken and you want to order them to attack a Christian prince? What you will say to them? You have to say like bok, 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 bok. so he have to speak to them. And then we find that later Suleiman he understand the language of the ants, but yet Allah he taught him the language of the birds. Somebody asking question. I had an argument with Coptic, with a Coptic. Suppose preaching against Islam is not Christian, so do not do do nothing. Uh, I need to ask David Wood how he put uh, the questions in the screen, because always I have to. Okay, let's see, guys, here just to answer this question, even though it's not the topic. 
I had an argument with a Coptic supposedly preaching against Islam is not a Christian. So do not do nothing and be a victim is being a Christian. How do you empower Christians to do more? This is need. It needs to own its own vid. My friend, anyone he have his own idea, no problem. He think this is not a Christian. We'll ask him, isn't it Jesus says <coughs> to the Jews? He said to the Jews, and those are Jews, they are believers in the true God, the son of vipers. Didn't he debate with the Jews? Did he didn't he flip the tables of the Jews in the temple? He said to him, You made the house of my father a marketplace. So those who say things like this, they are false Christians. They have nothing to do with Christianity. A true Christian, he stands for the truth. A fake Christian, he say, none of my business. No, it's your business. What he's saying to you, let more than a billion a human being go to hell. That is not a Christianity. For us, we don't hate Muslims, we love to save them. So how the Muslim, they will know Islam is false if you don't talk about it. So you are saying to them, stay as Muslim, it's okay, it's good, you will go to heaven. Isn't it the Bible says the one who denied the father the son is an antichrist so my friend don't let those people fool you they are liars and they are fake and they will go to hell yet they claim to be Christian because a Christian who don't bring people with him to heaven or he do nothing during his lifetime to bring people to the to, to the true belief he is a false Christian this is why Jesus said not everyone says to me Lord Lord will enter the kingdom of my father but the one who do his will so those are doing his will by saying Islam is okay is that the will of God all right so don't don't make people fool you or discourage you I hear this always by the way many people they say to me this is not a Christian you make fun of it said no this is a Christian this is very Christian go and read the Bible they are liars and the devil always he try to 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 like uh, he encourage you to do the wrong, and he discourage you from doing the right. If I post right now a video, in YouTube about women doing belly dancing, nobody will flag my video. Right? Post a video about women shaking her ass in the front of the camera. Everybody will give you a like. Nobody ever will flag your video. We make a video. We can't even keep it in the screen for two hours. Because simply we see the truth. And this guy is no Coptic, he is no Christian. Now, let's go back to our topic. As you see here, the story in the Quran alone, in this chapter alone, proven the Islam to be false. Who in the world wanna believe that this story happened to Suleiman? <coughs> Flying carpet. Flying carpet can fit for six hundred thousand chairs, and all his kingship equipment in the top of it. Suleiman, he reached the value of the ends. This is a wise prophet he is teaching this if Muhammad have little tiny wisdom he will never accept to add this to his Quran and here remember the Muslim they say that this is not Muhammad talking this is Allah which means Allah himself is an idiot if Allah is exist who want to believe in this garbage who is a Muslim here believe that Suleiman he went to the valley of the ants and then he heard an ant saying to the other ants, hide, otherwise Suleiman will crush you. Who believe in this? Anyone? Who is a Muslim in the chat? He would like to say, I believe in this. As I know, and look, you guys, by the way, this is the Muslim translation, not me. 
and Suleiman or Solomon, he, he he was laughing at her speech, but ants don't talk. Ants are deaf, mute, they have no hearing, they have no ears, they do communicate either by vibration or by chemical. What he heard her speech. And what make it more hilarious that there's a billion ant only he heard one <clears throat> and by the way once a muslim he, he you know i i spoke to thousands and thousands of muslims he said to me okay christian prince i have a question for you I said what he said does it say in arabic here qalat namla which means this namla is a female I said okay yeah he said do you know that science discovered that the one who warn other ants are females I said okay he said how the Quran know that the guy he speak Arabic I said Abdul what is the word we use for a singular ant he said Namla I said okay I said so so what do you I just ask you what is the word the only word we have for ant in Arabic if it is one ant he said Namla I said okay he did not get it. he's so slow well, this is how the Arabic is. We call it Namla. It doesn't matter if it's a male or female. In Arabic, we don't have male and female Namla. Nobody look at their balls. Or what we knew, it's an insect. We call it Namla. So, male or female, we call them Namla. This is not a miracle. Why do that? We have another word. Go ask any Arab. When he see an ant in the floor, he say he call it Namla. He don't look at her balls or she have a balls we call them namla so look look how they try to fabricate all the garbage there and they try to find a scientific thing finally we found science do you know that the one who worn is a namla is an ant female it doesn't say that my friend this is the word in arabic and this is how we use it for centuries before islam And then what is driving me crazy how this ant knew the name of Suleiman because guys look at the speech of the ant did you notice the speech of the ant the ant she said enter your dwelling lest Solomon less Solomon okay I got it an ant is warning the other ant to hide how she knew his name is Solomon I will give you three options Solomon, he have a tag in Arabic. It says, I am Solomon. How she knew she's an ant. So the verse here have tons of mistakes, stupid mistakes. The value of the ants, where is that? There's a valley, only ants there? Only ants live in this valley? The, the United States of ants. There's ants everywhere. The value of the ants. And one of the ants, what about the rest? They did not say anything. There's only one ant out of the billion ants they, they speak. And maybe this is the only one is holding a microphone. And as long as so man, he can hear the, the, the sound of an ant, which is a mute. I feel sorry for Suleiman because how many sound he hear for all the insect around him if they are making noise this guy his ears must be really crazy and then the story continue not only an ant talking and not only he is laughing at her speech which is very stupid then Suleiman he checked his army of the birds and he saw it among the birds and he said how is that how is that I don't see the hoopoo? Is he among the absent? The king who is checking his chickens and his birds. Have you ever heard of a king? Even Huri Bhutar did not come with this story. Who in the world want to believe that this is God telling us a story about a prophet? His name is Solomon. 
this is a story you can go right now search for in, in Google a book it's called the Legion of the Jews by the way it's for free because it's more than a hundred year old the Legion of the Jews you will find the stories there the fool Muhammad he copied legions of the Jews he may he says he claimed that Allah told him those stories remember Muhammad he lived between the Jews and if I don't find an excuse from this bird I'm going to make him barbecue have you ever heard of a king he want to barbecue a bird if you don't give me an excuse so now the bird he come in front of the king hey, hey, hey king please don't uh, barbecue me I was looking for you for a woman ah, this is why the bird was absent he was looking around and now he found a woman who have no hair in her legs which is very unique we are Middle East and we are very hairy And then after he told him about her and where she is located, Suleiman, he ordered his flying carpet and bingo. And this is God talking. And here you will see that Suleiman is discussing how we can get this woman. One of the genie, his name is Afrit. Afrit, by the way, he's a genie. Let me see if I can find you how Afrit looked like for Muslims, how they imagine him. Give me a second, let me... Just to show you what Afrit is. I'm trying to find the picture. Afrit is a genie, but he is a special kind of genie. He is very fast. That's why they call him Afrit. He can bring you anything you want. Yeah, this is the Afrit. I think you saw this is like an Alibaba, etc. You know, if you see the story of Alibaba, this is the Afrit. Afrit who come from inside the you know container or whatever. So one of the Afrit he said to Suleiman, Bingo. Let me bring her to you before even you blink your eye. The Afrit says that. Yes, the Afrit, he says that. The Afrit. A very fast Afrit, genie, he said, I will bring it to thee before you even blink your eye or even move your ass from your chair. I am very strong and I am very uh, trusty for such a work. Who want to believe in this garbage? Sulaiman sitting in his chair, he have a bird speaking to him. Afrits and genies are around. Human ministers, bird ministers, and now they are discussing how they can get this woman. So when you tell me about 10 things about your prophet, tell us that he is a crazy man to believe in those stories. Why Muhammad in his time, he did not notice that this is stupid. How idiot he is to take those stories claiming that Allah told him this. And by the way, here, there is something mystery I changed the Muslim to tell me what is that? قال الذي عنده علم من الكتاب أنا آتيك به قبل أن يرتد إليك طرفك. Who is a Muslim to tell me who is this guy? The one who have the knowledge of the book said, "I bring him to you before you blink your eye." Who is that? Who is a Muslim to tell us who is this? Anyone?
just to show you the madness of, of this cult. Who is this guy? Anyone knows? Who is this guy who have the knowledge of the book? Which book? And how he can bring that woman so fast before even he blink his eyes? Who is this guy? Is he a human? Hmm? I don't see any comment from the Muslims. What happened? Who is a Muslim knows who is this guy who have the knowledge of the book? I'm just giving you a chance, all of you to see, that Muslims, they have no idea what is written. And what is this? The guy, I mean, what kind of a book? He says, the one who have knowledge of the book, he says that. Who is that? How we will know now who is this? Jibreel? No, not Jibreel. Anyone? If you read the Islamic interpretation, you will get dizzy. Everyone give you his own interpretation. The edge or the end of it, we arrive to a guy, he is a Jew. And his name is Asif bin Barkhia. Let's go and see Islamic and English uh, interpretation. Hold on, let us see. All right. Again, this is the Islamic interpretation, not mine. I'm not the one saying what you will see in the screen. It is what they say. All right. This is uh, the website of the Kingdom of Jordan. Finally, it's, it's working today. So thank God. Usually nothing works in this website, the same as anything in Jordan. The one who had the knowledge of the revealed scripture, and he, and this was one, this one was Asif bin Barkhaya. They are trying to make it like a, a Jewish name. Now, who is this Asif bin Barkhaya? Where, where, where the name is coming from? And as long as he is a person who have knowledge in the book, how he can bring the women before the guy he is even blink his eye? A righteous individual with the knowledge of God, the greatest uh, God, the greatest name. He have guys. This guy, Berchaya, is the only one who know the true name of God. So what is Allah name then? What Allah mean? I mean, look how stupid even I mean you, you go crazy when you read Islamic books. The only one who knows the great name of Allah is this man. Suleiman, he don't know it. Muhammad do not know it. Nobody know it. This man, he know it. Okay, what is the name? No problem. Which, when he invoked in supplication for something, it is immediately granted. Look at this guy. And this is how he can bring this woman so fast. He can say Allah, Allah, Allah. So if Solomon he do that, it's not going to work. If Solomon he ask Allah to bring this woman, it's not going to work. If Muhammad, Muhammad he pray to Allah to forgive people, to nothing happen. But this guy Burkhaya, if he invoke Allah, bingo. And this is how he can bring the women in the blink of an eye. He said, I will bring it. To you before your glance return to 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 you after you look of some of something like look at something turn your eyes you will find her. 
and then afrit again the afrit again the genie so he the afrit said to him look 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 up toward the heaven which he did and when his gallants returned in front of him he found Balqis a throne placed before him look at what happened the guy uh, Suleiman he looked up in the sky he looked down again he found the throne of Balqis in the front this is the Queen of Sheba this is a story <clears throat> and this is a Quran How Muhammad he accept those stories and put them in the Quran so what we learn from Muhammad you know yesterday we made a video about women how, how Muhammad look at women he believed that they, they are the devil he believed they are stupid he believed most of them they will go to hell he believed uh, 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 you know women are not equal to men to be witness because they have half a brain uh, uh, we should beat them we should uh, uh, they are like property etc and today we learn that Muhammad obviously is an idiot to accept and adopt stories from people before him and he rejoined those stories making it as it is coming from his God and by the way that he exposed himself who in the world want to believe in this garbage how I can believe in it and then you will notice that Muhammad not only he adopted stories before him he's a thief he claiming claiming stories belong to him as an example the story of the seven sleepers the seven sleepers is a great example of the thief Muhammad Seven sleepers, you can search it. It's a story written hundreds of years before Muhammad by a bishop from Syria. His name Jacob Yaqub. And this story is not real. It's a fiction story about Christians being discriminated, tortured, and because at that time they were, you know, they were suffering. So this uh, this uh, author he wrote this book as an example about the victory will come so he told it like it's a fiction story made for youth even made for kids it's not made for every adult that have patient we are discriminated but we will be victorious so the story is about a group of young christians who've been discriminated and they chase them to kill them then they hide in a cave and god he made them sleep and he put an angel guarding their cave for 300 years some and then after that when they woke up they found everybody around them became a Christian this is what the story it's a fiction story Muhammad he took it he put it in the Quran and the Christian they were dying laughing at Muhammad doing that because this is a fiction story and not only Muhammad he put it in the Quran Muhammad the idiot because he was trying to copy the story from others you will see here in Arabic it says uh, that those uh, those uh, guys they have with them it says وكلبهم. كلبهم in Arabic mean dog but all of us we knew that in Islam dogs are dirty they are nudges actually if you keep a dog Allah take from your deed you go to hell so how the dog appear in this story and he is the one who is guarding them the fact is, in the Aramaic, it is kali'ahum, from the word kala'a, which means the one who, their, their provider, the protector. So the story in the Christian book is as a following. Those guys, they were hidden in a cave, and there is an angel who opened his arm. He opened his two arms. Have you ever heard of a dog, he have two arms? Since when? And look at the Muslim 
translation to cover the stupidity look what they say here and their dog is stretching out his bows this doesn't say that change the translator it says arms arms since when dogs have two arms I like that dogs have two arms you see the translation false it is two arms but the Muslim trying to hide what the Quran is saying because how we can explain how the Quran have how it says he have two arms look all the translations saying the same here we will keep changing until we find one of them is the truthful hmm. see all of them they are lying if we take the word zero in Arabic and we post it in Google translation we will find right away that the word arms the word zero is arm That Bada in Surah 68 verse 13 does not mean after Bada. Ah, okay, we will go there after we finish this. You see all the translations saying uh, uh, they are stretching, our stretching, but the fact in Arabic it says Azirai. Why? Because Muhammad he did not understand in Arabic the Aramaic language, he thought this is Kalbahum, which means their dog. However, this is a fiction story. Muhammad, he took it, he put it in the Quran. And you, you will see how silly the Quran is by reading this verse alone. Some people, they say, speaking about those seven sleepers, so the people will say now, they say, there are three and their dog is now, is the fourth. And some, they say, there are five and their dog is six. And some, they say, there are seven and their dog is number eight. I mean, what this is? Just tell us their number. And then the answer, what? Say, Muhammad, only my Lord know their number. So what is the number? What the point of saying, some they say they are three and their dog is number four. Some they say they are four and their dog is number five. Some they say number six and their dog is number seven. Some they say they are seven and their dog is number eight. Give us the number, man. What, 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 obviously, obviously, this guy, he do not know. They ask him, okay, how many, how many they are? Because he, Muhammad, he's a liar. Each time he tells the story, he tells it differently. He's not sure really what the number is. So they are asking him, okay, what is the number? And he was afraid to give the number because it's going to get busted. So he said, some they say this, some they say that, some they say that. And Allah not only knows, and, if, and not only that, look how silly. My Lord knows their number. No one know them except a few. You just said no one know them except a few. And my Lord know the number. So what the number? You just said only few knows. Do you see the stupidity? How this is can be from God? Now, somebody about uh, chapter sixty-eight, verse number thirteen, he says, does not mean after. All right. Let us go to the Quran, chapter 68. All right. And then we go to verses 13. It says, uh, So I don't know really what the question is here. Does not mean after Bada. Hmm. So here he was the word Bada does not mean okay. Well, change the translator, you will find right away that the word I mean this is silly. When a Muslim he says the word Bada, okay, let, let us find different verse using the word Bada. Hmm? And you will find it's mean after that. I mean, this is a basic uh, Arabic. Who in the world when I say such a statement? The one who is saying that to you, he must be stupid. All right. Uh, 
Uh, if we go to this verse, this is the word Bada, and this is the translation. And here, by the way, is a mistake in the Quran in this chapter, chapter 79, because the verses here are speaking that Allah, He created the uh, uh, the heaven, and then He created the day and the night, which means the sun, the stars. And then after that, He started walking in the earth and He made it flat. And then after that, He made the water and grass. And then after that, he made the mountains. But this is totally different from the chapter 41, where it says totally the opposite. You can check it out. If if the word bada does not uh, does not uh, have nothing to do with timing, so why why we why we use it? Always the word bada is for something will happen after. As simple as that. Why we use it then? Muslims sometimes they, I feel sorry for them. I, I mean, put yourself in their shoes. You show them all this madness, and then they, they, you, you ask him to defend what he will say. He have to come with all excuses. The first one he was he was he was trying to say he would say you don't speak Arabic. If you remember the debate with me, Mimi Hijab and David Wood, he start making fun of David Wood. Why? Because he didn't speak Arabic. But the fact David Wood, who don't speak Arabic, was saying the truth. And Mimi Hijab, who speak Arabic, was lying. So the first thing they try to use against you, you don't know Arabic. Okay, I speak Arabic. Prove me wrong. And this is why always they try to speak to somebody who don't speak Arabic, so they can't play with the meaning translation. Because most of the answers is based on false translations. No, not 99%, 100%. Always Bada is about after. That's what Bada means. Bada always comes as after. doesn't come as something else. There's nothing else. The enter now, we don't have any Muslim really trying to contact me. He want to call me. I don't see anyone. Anyone? Who is a Muslim who would like to call me? I'm not going to ask you any question. You call me and you tell me anything good about Islam. Anything. Anyone? So as you see, you know, Islam is, is you know, the Muslim, they try to very much to praise Muhammad, make him the most amazing, the wonderful. But Muhammad was not even a normal person. I have to agree. He was not a normal person. He was a madman. There's no question about that. Even the Muslims, they admit that Muhammad was not normal in a negative way. If I say to you, there is somebody he tried many times to commit suicide, what you would say? Is he normal? Is he stable? Is committing suicide, trying to kill yourself, is a sign of somebody stable? This is the Muslim books saying that the Prophet of Allah, he tried to throw himself from the top of the mountains many times. Do we really need to prove that Muhammad obviously have a mental illness? 
the story itself are proving to us not only Muhammad is suffering from mental illness but it's a continuous situation and it's a kind of a silly each time read carefully the Prophet becomes so sad as we have heard that he intended several times to throw himself from the top of the high mountains several times do, do you see the word several times why Muhammad trying to kill himself several times what he was trying to why what lead him into such a point I mean you are lucky you're prophet of God you are the final prophet Allah he gave you power of 40 men in bed even me I don't have that I have 39 so why a man like this the best of the booty as many women as you wish fifth of every attack and yet you want to commit suicide I mean what's wrong with you several times and look what happened each time Muhammad he tried to commit suicide what happened this is Muhammad's story remember because he is all alone there and every time he went up to the top of the mountain in order to throw himself down Jibreel again Jibreel here we go Jibreel is coming Jibreel would appear before him and say oh Muhammad you are indeed Allah messenger okay so what the reason Muhammad want to kill himself Muhammad don't believe he's a messenger do you see it do you see it so the reason is for Muhammad to try to commit suicide that he himself do not believe is a prophet if you're a prophet try to kill himself because he think he's a crazy and he is not a messenger why you are asking us to believe in him and then after Jibreel he says to him you are truly a messenger of Allah what will happen read carefully whereupon this his heart would become quiet or quiet and he would calm down and would return home wonderful just he told him you are truly indeed the messenger of Allah Muhammad he cooled down he was like leave me alone I want to kill myself don't hold me stop touching me I want to jump and then and Jibreel he says prophet just stop indeed you are a messenger of Allah and the prophet he look at him really yes you can ask even the pink panther okay so you think really I'm prophet of Allah absolutely look at you have you ever seen a prophet of Allah is it crazy you are just one of them okay you make sense here okay I'm going to go home he go home second day in the morning he wake up Muhammad he go up in the top of the mountain again he climbed the mountain and whenever the period of the coming inspiration used to become long he would do as before like what the heck with this guy So he climbed the mountain. Okay, you guys, you missed my art, right? Uh, I know, I know. Okay. So Muhammad is here. This is the mountain. Hmm? This is the mountain. And Muhammad, he climbed the mountain. But Muslims, it's okay if we say Muhammad, brother, without saying uh, Allah pray on him? It's okay. I hope. I hope you will not uh, do anything to me because I said Muhammad with his name without you know like I mean S A W F M you know short wave uh, long wave. So Muhammad brother, he climbed the mountain. He's here now. Muhammad is here, brother. Muhammad is here. Muhammad is here. Muhammad is here. Muhammad is here. Here, here, here. I feel sorry for him. Here, he can't breathe no more. And now he is in the top of the mountain and he want to throw himself and then Jibreel appear in the front of him and he hold him from his panty Well, why Jibreel don't appear for him here before he go to the mountain? In his home The poor guy he climbed the mountain all the way to the top of the mountain and now you appear for him What about you tell him before you go? Don't you think it's too late? 
Why you don't stop in the front of the door of the house? You know what he's going to do. Tell him, Habibi Muhammad, you are a prophet, Muhammad. And the prophet will look at you and says, Thank you, you told me before because I was going to throw myself from the top of the mountain. You believe it? Habibi Muhammad, don't do that, Muhammad. He will go. I told you before you go to the mountain, he'd climb all the way. I think Muhammad was trying to lose weight. So he go, he do hiking, and God knows how hard it is to climb a mountain. And then when he arrived in the top, Muhammad he said that Jibreel said to him, Habibi Muhammad, don't do that, Muhammad. Muhammad he says to him, Leave me alone, leave Britney alone. I want to commit suicide. I'm sick of this life. I hate myself. Muhammad Habibi, don't do that, Muhammad. He cannot even jump anyway, Muhammad. I'm holding you from your belly button. <laughs> you cannot do it. Leave me alone. I want to commit suicide. I hate myself. I'm not a prophet. And then Muhammad the angel he says to him, as same as before, he says to him, Truly, truly, you are a prophet. And this is how you convince him as a prophet just by saying to him, Truly, truly, you are a prophet. I mean, how easy it is. You say to a guy, truly, truly, you are a prophet. He became like, okay, I am a prophet. Okay, I believe you. A second ago, he was going to kill himself. A second after, just because you said to him, indeed, you are a prophet. Right away, he said, okay. Uh, okay, why you don't remember that yesterday? You told him the same. Why second day is doing it? So either you have to admit that Muhammad is a madman, stupid, or he's fabricating the story. You tell me which one. Master Harun, you want to call me? Call me. Who's holding you? Do you need an invitation? Any Muslim can call me. You are welcome. Hmm? Any Muhammadan? What do you think? So, what the Muslim don't tell you that Muhammad, obviously, additional to all the madness we showed you, he have a mental illness. We mentioned to you many times before that Muhammad even he imagined himself doing things but in fact he never did and the Muslim explained that by saying he was bewitched but the bewitching thing is always an excuse for the Arab to, because the Arab they don't know what's happening when somebody have a mental illness they can explain so especially like in suddenly he go like crazy like he's acting normally during the daytime and then suddenly something happened he freak out so they say once the prophet was bewitched so that he began to imagine that he had done the thing which in fact he did not okay how we can trust Muhammad that he saw an angel the guy he imagined as you see you Muslim you say our prophet was a bewitched prophet well nice to meet you mr. bewitched a prophet who was bewitched Allah have time to, to protect Jesus Isa but he have no time to protect the bewitched prophet here we go the prophet is under the control of the devil this is what bewitched mean controlled by black magic Muslim believe in black magic where was Allah at that time where Muhammad was bewitched he was weak taking a nap vacation and not only he was bewitched and he imagined things even his sex was fake that if even that is like it was very tough on him to the point even his sexual life was fake so how we can trust him the prophet continued for such a such a period of time imagining that he had slept had boom boom with his wives but in fact he did not so what he was doing when he imagined he was having sex he what what he was doing exactly eating falafel how we can trust a guy like this so even Islamic books and until now we showed you nothing except Islamic books even Islamic books witness that Muhammad is mentally ill the Arab they call Muhammad crazy too but here you see I can say to somebody crazy and it doesn't mean really he is but all those things you added together with calling somebody crazy, it makes sense he's a crazy. Yes, he is. All those verses saying Muhammad is a Majnoon.
do you see it this the Arab they did not find it amazing they found this uh, this guy is a crazy crazy man Do you see it? All those verses. He is a majnoon. He is a madman. This was the opinion of the Arab on Muhammad. All those verses. Nobody saw him as a wise man. Nobody saw him as a decent, stable man. They saw him as a madman. And the Muslims agree. Muhammad was bewitched, according to them. And look how many times. <clears throat> and Allah, he wanted to support Muhammad. He said to him, you know what? You are not crazy. Allah saying to Muhammad, you aren't the crazy. But the man who tried to commit himself uh, suicide himself, he cannot be a normal. Hmm? <clears throat> People they call Noah Majnoon before. So Muhammad, don't you are not our first one? Even Noah they call him Majnoon. But Noah did not try to commit suicide. He did not say I was bewitched, imagine myself having sex. He did not say stupid things. What the Arab they say when they see Muhammad reciting Quran? <clears throat> Anyone? Any Muslim? And by the way, the Quran is not a poet. It's a stupid book. It's not the Arabic is horrible. I can make ten times better than the Quran. What ten times? A million times better than the Quran. And don't say Jesus Akbar, my friend. This is an insult to Jesus. Akbar means bigger. We don't worship idols, and Jesus is not an idol. Any Muslim? So what Muslim they say to us about Muhammad, or those articles, obviously they are wrong, false. Muhammad was a weird man. Muhammad was... Sometimes, you know, I mean, uh, I mean, even, even the word crazy is, doesn't fit with him. Disgusting, crazy, even the Muslims accuse him that he stole an underwear. I mean, have you ever heard of a prophet and his followers, they accuse their boss who took an underwear? And Allah, he made a verse about the underwear. Allah himself make a verse about the underwear and what the verse saying he did not take the underwear okay what about you tell us where is the underwear so imagine you are the head of the universe and somebody accuse your prophet that he stole piece of a clothing and then you say to them he is not the one who took it okay who is the one who took it you are Allah you are the one who knows obviously it's Muhammad who took it So you send a message from the seven galaxies saying to us, Muhammad did not take it. Okay, what about you tell us who took it? Until now it's missing. Hmm?
you know, for Allah to make Muhammad clear from this crime, he just say, okay, the guy who took it, his name is etc. Is in Surah chapter four, verse number thirty-six. <clears throat> Not a good thing about Islam. My friend, any chapter, any verse in Islam is not a good thing about Islam. And this is why I'm saying to the Muslims, I challenge you to show me one good thing about Islam. Choose whatever you want. What good thing? And serve Allah. Scribe nothing as partner into Him. And show kindness to your parents. Muhammad saying, show kindness to your parents. So what we will do with the chapter 9 verse 23 Isn't this the same book? We cannot take your father as a friend. How we show kindness by not taking them as a friend. They are your enemy. Is that how you show kindness you cannot take them as a friends your parents your mother your father and even your brothers from your blood you can take them as friends so when you see a verses in the Quran you might say okay here look like sound Muhammad is a good guy look he's teaching that you should nice to be nice to your parents uh, even they quote for you. Do you see? Do you know that Muhammad he says that heaven is under the feet of the mothers? Well, heaven under the feet of the mothers, but mothers they will go to hell. So what the Muslim explained that to you, that mothers will go to hell, but you go to heaven if you are nice to them. How stupid is that? You know what I mean? Isn't it Muhammad he says that most of women, they are going to go. To hell hmm. are we making things up those are the mothers Muhammad he saw that most of people in hellfire are women And Muhammad he accused them that they have deficiency in their brain this is why they will go to hell which is showing us again that Muhammad is stupid man because if I have deficiency in my mind that should not be a reason to go to hell God is all mighty all justice so he will judge you by your ability so if if though of those women they have deficiency in their mind how that can be a reason to go to hell deficiency you see if you have a defect is a defect by the maker who make you not by you it's not me let's say I am born and I have a problem in my head okay is God going to punish me the same as somebody he have a brain no that's not fair Muhammad claimed that because women they have a lack they have they have a deficiency in their brain that is the reason they will go to hell lacking of intellect have you ever heard of a stupid uh, uh, argument like this intelligence Deficiency is something not of my choice. I can I, I can wish to be the most smart person in the whole world, but it's not a choice I can make. The one who made me. So how Allah is the one who made us. Yet, because He made us with deficiency, we will go to hell. I have not seen anyone more deficient in intelligence. And religion than you Muhammad is speaking to who to women so because women they have deficiency in their intelligence they will go to hell Muhammad is supposed to now he's a smarter 
he proved to us how women they have deficiency not only in intelligence even in religion intelligence proven that women they are not equal to be witnessed as a one man in Islam two women equal to one man and only they can witness in the case of borrowing money only and what is deficiency in their religion they have their period look at this is stupid you are the one who forbid them from praying when they have their period and now you are saying because of that you will go to hell is it Allah who made women have menses? So Allah, He made the women have menses, and because they have menses, they will go to hell? <laughs> Obviously, the one who said that, He Himself, He have deficiency. It's not the women. Do you understand me, guys? The one who said such a stupid statement, He Himself is the one have deficiency, not the women. You can go to hell for something you did, not something you created with. That's stupid. So the deficiency in their brain is the guilt, and that will make them go to hell. And deficiency of having their menses, it's a guilt, they will go to hell with it. But both of them is not their fault. What kind of cult this cult is? Stupid. The whole point is, Muhammad was trying to make them give it charity, give money, donation. This is why you see in the hadith it says, when the women, they heard that, they start taking off their ears and their bracelet and they give it to Muhammad. This is the whole point. All cult leaders, they try to make you pay them money. Make donation now so God will bless you. Give your money now so God will forgive you. And this is exactly. Okay, a second ago they will go to hell. Now after they give you their earring and their, their bracelet, they will go to heaven? All cult leaders, they share the same thing. Where is your money? So the whole story here is about what? About giving me your money. That's why Muhammad in the Quran, he said, give Allah a loan, a mortgage, Allah will forgive you. Uh, Mimi Hijab, after he finished his debate in one hour, he made a video. Oh, I want to give Allah mortgage so Allah will forgive your sin. He quote this chapter. He said to himself, I just finished the debate. The Muslim, they like it, which is obviously hilarious. And now it's time to get the money. Not even an hour after, he made this, the video saying, hey, if you lend into Allah a good loan, he would double it for you and forgive you. Why if you give Allah, why if you give Muhammad money, who Allah will, okay, Allah will take the money, Muhammad. Okay, why if we give money to Muhammad, Allah will forgive me. Explain to us. Just give you money and forgiving. And not only that, Allah will double it to me. Double it where? It's a bribe. You can't bribe God. If you donate to Christian Prince, do you think you can go to hell or to heaven? That's have nothing to do with donation. You donate to Christian Prince, you do not donate to Christian Prince, you cannot bribe God. If a Christian Prince ever said to you, if you donate to me, you will go to etc. here or there, he's lying to you. People who ask you to give your money to be forgiven, obviously they are a scam. God don't forgive because you give some money. God can forgive you for being a person who repent. A person who is changing his life. Who he was something bad and he became something different. He repent. He asked for forgiveness. He helped others. So the donation is not the way to go to heaven. And the one who says that to you is absolutely a liar and he is trying to fool you. You know the Messiah, if you read all what the Messiah did, he raised people from death. He healed all kind of illness. He never took a penny. And here when I say he never took, he never asked. 
He never say if you pay me I forgive you and suppose they rem remember we are talking about the Messiah who we believe is God while the God of Muhammad asked him begging for money claiming that if you give him money it's a it's a loan he will forgive you the Messiah he was saying totally the opposite about money all cult leaders they share the same thing money sex power property etc and Muhammad he have it all what about Muhammad making verses saying any woman she can give her private part to him so he can boom boom with her what does this have to do with God what does this have to do with the religion is called Islam how that can help God how that can help Islam any woman she want to give herself to the Prophet and he made a long verse saying all those women they can take off their panty for me this is from God all those women Uh, somebody saying CP you can't do that now if you deceive your your student we accept that I don't know what you mean what kind of a prophet he says any woman she want to give herself to the prophet and this is a privilege for him and look the Muslim by the way they translate the word yes thank you which is a I in G F in her not marrying her as a privilege only today all of this about women a privilege only today isn't it obvious so we have God he have a law for mankind all of them they have law except Muhammad he have a privilege and the privilege is about penises and vagina and money isn't it obvious that this guy is a scam <clears throat> Privilege to thee? Why Muhammad seeking privilege and why Allah gave him Muhammad the privilege about his private part? What what does this have to do with God? Okay, Muhammad now he have women lying up in the front of his door, taking off his panty. And how that will make God happy. You see, when we speak about God, everything have a reason. So ask yourself, what is the reason behind this? What, what this verse accomplished to Allah. Allah sitting in his uh, office, he is the creator of the universe. Do you know how big the universe? And now Allah sitting in his office and he's writing this article saying, a privilege for the prophet. Any woman she can take off her panty and go with him in the bed only for the prophet. And Allah will look at Muhammad. Are you happy now, Muhammad? Are you happy now? Are you happy? And the prophet says, "You see, sir, this is Allah place. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Allah. Thank you, please, Allah bless you. What is that?" And then Muhammad, after he made this verse, women who they are not good looking at all, start coming offering themselves because those women, they are not asking really to sleep with Muhammad because they like to sleep with him, but they are looking for security. The second you sleep, the prophet sleep with you, you will have a salary, you will have a house, you will have you are protected. That's it. You are the you are you are the girlfriend of the prophet. And then when those not good looking women, I'm trying to avoid the word ugly, those women who they are not good looking start offering themselves, Muhammad, you want to get rid of them? Like what I did, I just, any woman she gave herself, uh, that's mean any woman, any believing woman, old, young, I don't want those old ones, I don't want those, I want the good looking one. So he said, Allah, he gave me this verse. Uh, you can delay any of them when you wish, and you can sleep with any of them when you wish. So the women now they can say, but you say to us, any woman she give herself to you. I want to give myself, take me. Uh, no, no, and you know. Always Muhammad, he used Allah as a puppet. So he made a verse saying, any woman she can give herself so he can have sex with her. Not to marry her. This is a lie. It's a privilege. But then this privilege is not working good because not all those women are good looking. He want only good looking women. But he cannot say that. So he came with the second verse saying, 
Ah, Allah told me I can de I can delay or I can refuse as I wish. Hmm? What is that? And then the people they start talking about Muhammad. What kind of a man he is? So Muhammad he come with a new verse. He says, "But don't you know Allah told me that it's not allowed for you to take more wives? Is? Who need wives? You need any woman she can go for herself and all the slaves." All the slaves, all your right hand possess is your is, is open slave for you for sex. And Muhammad was a cheap person, very cheap. They go and they eat. They attend his house. Muhammad don't like it. Here we go. A verse came from Allah. Oh, you believe? Don't enter the house of the Prophet for a meal. <laughs> okay guys I forgot to tell you that Allah told me that you don't you can you are not allowed to visit the Christian Prince when he have a meal in the table let me finish okay and meet you outside don't enter my house hmm what is that this is, a, this is a house of a prophet. The fifth of the booty. Any woman she can give herself. Women, they are taking their earring and their bracelet giving it to Muhammad. And now he is worried about a dish. A poor guy will come to his house and he will eat it. Obviously, Muhammad is a prophet of God. <clears throat> While Jesus was saying, I've been a stranger and you took me in. I was a prisoner and you visited me. I was hungry and you feeded me. Which means Jesus saying to you, when you feed a hungry person, you are feeding Jesus. When you are merciful for all whatever kind of a human being, you are doing it to Jesus, not to that person. Muhammad was busy making verses saying, Don't come to my house when I have food. What does this have to do with God? And if you want to ask the wife of the prophet, here you see Muhammad, he treats his women as a property. He don't want them to see anybody. Ask them from behind the curtain. What? Ask them from behind the curtain. Why? The wives of the prophet were naked. Here we go, Muhammad, he plays the women behind the curtain. This is your place. Your place as a female is behind the curtain. We men, we speak to you. You are the one behind the curtain, not us. What do you think, Muslims? Anyway, we will not keep you longer. This video became so long now. Uh, feel free to download the video. We will not, as you know, we don't keep the videos in our channel. Please download them as soon as you can. And always, if you want to find a video which we just made and it's not in the channel anymore, this is what you do. Very easy way. You look for the title. What was the title for today? 10 things you should know about Prophet Muhammad. You learn, you know, you search for that title and you go to filter in in the, in YouTube you filter it for the last 24 hours or even maybe a few hours two hours or whatever one hour and then you will find those who are posting my video in their channel so you can either download or you can watch the video or even you can go to patreon where I re update the link before I delete so I want to say thank you guys for being here and as you see we reject Muhammad for millions and millions of reasons and we are the Arab who speak Arabic we found the Quran a very stupid book in every way in every mean scientifically stupid grammatically stupid language stupid errors stupid history stupid it's a stupid book in every way in every mean
and this is why Muhammad he could not convert the Arab to Islam unless he took a war side and the sword this is why in the Quran it says there's a chapter it's called the chapter of Al-Fatih the victory and Nasr when Muhammad became victorious people they enter into Islam by tens of thousands in one day which means they reject Islam as long they can but Muhammad now became victorious by the sword when Allah gave victory people enter Islam by waves thousands and thousands in one day and this is how Islam started it was the victory of the sword and the Messiah said the one who lived by the sword by the sword will be taken and this is why Islam actually is suffering from the sword you will not find the Muslim country having peace Muslims killing Muslims from the same sect not necessarily between other sect because this cult is based by the sword the one who lived by the sword he died by it <clears throat> and that's exactly what Islam is about I have to say goodbye before I lose my voice totally I want to say thank you guys from may the Lord bless you all if you like to learn more about the cult of Islam feel free to read my books you can search my books Amazon Germany Amazon Spanish Spain that come France we have my books in many languages and so on more languages will be translated thank you very much Christ is Lord Islam is false and see you soon again bye bye